once again it's on. You know what time it is. It's time to play some toss. Welcome everyone to episode 124. That's right, 124. Toss, the Tristan on Sports Show. Yes, it is your main man, T Square Tristan Thomas. Thank you so much for joining us this week. Bucks basketball. Chris is back. Giannis is back. They're on a roll. Trade deadline is looming. You got to talk about it. We're going to get into the toss sweep where we got some WNBA news and transactions and controversy. And we got some NBA news. LeBron. Trades. Trade deadline. Ball is life on this episode for sure. But you all know how we get things started. We get things started with the state of the state. And let's talk about those Milwaukee Bucks. As we record this program on a Wednesday night before they face the Los Angeles Lakers on a Thursday night game, nationally televised. They currently sit at 37 and 17. That is second in the Eastern Conference, not that far back of Boston. Boston with another big win against the 76ers, who have been playing extremely well. Best record in the league since December 9th. So they're within earshot of them. 37 to 17, second in the Eastern Conference. They've won eight straight ball games. Eight straight. Playing some really good basketball. Was it eight straight or was it nine straight? They've won so many ball games, I can't even keep them straight. But I digress. They're playing some really good basketball. They've been playing really good basketball since Chris and Giannis returned to the lineup. No coincidence, they've gone on an eight-game win streak since those two came back. Giannis with, yeah, I know it's listed as knee soreness. And I'm not doubting that there was some knee soreness that seems to be the in vogue thing to sit players with. These days, it's the new load management. It's now knee soreness. To me, it was more of a veteran's rest, mid-season rest. And you saw Giannis needed it. Had a couple of single-digit scoring games there with something that we really haven't seen out of him. You could just tell that his usage was up and that he was a little bit worn out. And this is the last guy you need to be worn out at this point in the season. You're positioning yourself for postseason, positioning yourself for a long run into the postseason. You cannot have your MVP be worn out. Give him his veterans rest. You got to remember, he's been in the league 10 years now. He's got a lot of basketball mileage on his body, and he does take phenomenal care of his body, but that's still a lot of basketball he's logged on his body, and it's not just a lot of basketball. It's physical Basketball. He is the most dominant, most physical force in the NBA. Takes a lot of fouls, takes a lot of punishment. He needed that rest, so he was out for five games. Again, what I'm calling veterans rest, midseason maintenance, whatever you want to put to that, whatever superlative you want to use. Chris, we know. The litany of of his ailments, the the left wrist surgery and the knee issue. He came back. Have him on a minutes restriction. Which I would not be opposed to them keeping him on a minutes restriction and start ramping him up once you get closer to the playoffs to, to extend those minutes. Because you're going to need him. I was in the house as a fan. 
this past Saturday as the Bucks faced off against the Miami Heat. Good game. Heat has played themselves back into a position where they, they can avoid the play-in. Still a lot of basketball to be played, but they've been playing a lot better. Still a little bit up and down, but playing a lot better. I say I was in the house as a fan because you all, you all know that I, I, I covered this team. As best I can. But I digress. So I was in there as strictly as a fan just to watch the game. And it's always fun. It's always great. I'm there with my broski. Always good to get to a game with him and just enjoy it. But you all know that I couldn't just sit there as, 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 a, as a fan and just have my fan cap on. I went there with a critical eye. I went there to see what I, what did I need to see? Dennis dominant as always 35 point triple double. But for the first time this season, we saw Chris Middleton be Chris Middleton. The ease in which, in which he scored, the, the many ways in which he scored, getting to the cup, mid-range, three-point. Defense was solid. Seeing that up close and personal gave me the confidence to say Chris is back. And I said this on Twitter right after the game. You can follow me at D two zero double the number two, the number zero, the word double. I said, Chris is back and that's a problem for the rest of the league. Because when the bucks are healthy, they are an absolute bus all. They can run through anyone. Now, it was a back-and-forth game with the Heat, and again, you have to give credit to the Heat. They were well-coached. Eric Spolstra, love me some Eric Spolstra. He's going to get his guys down there to defend, and they did a pretty good job defending, and they were also making shots. But the Bucs really dug in on defense, especially in that second half. We're able to pull away in the end. Played smart offensively. Dug in defensively. Starting to look real familiar. Starting to look real familiar. If that's the Chris Middleton you're going to get, especially on a minutes restriction, just imagine if he gets more minutes. going to be more production. Which is going to be more trouble for the rest of the league. It truly was great to see. It was great to see him back in the flow being Chris Middleton. Seeing this team at home celebrating Black History Month. Gave out some dope caps created by Drew Holiday. To see them be who we know they can be and what we've witnessed them be before. And again, they're not even fully healthy. Remember, Bobby is still out. Bobby Portis. You get him back. I mean, it, it, it's, it's a real problem for the whole league when this squad is healthy. But you get Bobby back, and, and eventually you will. But what else do you need? Now, I spoke about this with, with Evan Wittallison on his show, Talking Sports with Elvin, with Evan. And he posed the question, what, what do the Bucks need? What do you believe the Bucks need right now? And, and I, to which I responded, I don't know. 
typically I would have an answer at this point in the season because we've seen the team together, we've seen them play, and we can really pinpoint, okay, they need this. If they get this, they can make a run. Like when they won the championship. Okay, if they get a wing defender, a guy who hit open threes, a guy like P.J. Tucker, they can, they can make a run. And they did. They won the NBA championship. But it's so hard to say that this season because we have not seen this squad fully healthy. So you can't really truthfully pinpoint the deficiencies on this squad because they haven't been healthy. Are there struggles because they haven't been healthy or are there struggles because they actually need X, Y, and Z? Now, you can always use a wing defender and a guy who can hit open threes. That is a premium. It's just the way the game is played these days. You have to have that. So the Bucs need that. Scoring wing, a wing that can guard, a guy that can hit shots. But it's so hard to really pinpoint exactly what you need because you haven't seen this team fully healthy. Again, Bobby is still out. The one name that keeps coming up is Jay Crowder. I have it on good authority that he was in Milwaukee. Bucks were talking to him. How that hasn't gotten done, I don't know. Perhaps the Suns are asking too much in compensation. The Bucks' names was attached to Cam Reddish for a little bit, but Cam Reddish just got traded earlier tonight. He's going to Portland. Josh Hart is going to the New York Knicks. Jalen Brunson, and there's a clip going around about it. Jalen Brunson was very happy about that, his old college teammate. They're now reunited on the Knicks. Brunson was getting his jersey retired at Villanova when he found out about the trade. The clip definitely makes me laugh because <laughs> he was he's super excited. I actually like that trade for the Knicks, but I digress. We talk about the Bucks. I think a guy like Jay Crowder will fit anywhere. But another name, again, you you, you, heard, you heard Cam Reddish being attached to the Bucs. I it really didn't feel like that had any true traction. I think that was just a name that people were kind of fantasizing about and bringing in because he's a young, athletic guy who still has a chance to put it all together. We saw him giving the Bucs straight buckets in the playoffs before. So, you know. But another name that's being mentioned, Derrick Rose. Now, now Derrick's Ro- Derrick Rose's name has been attached to the Bucks for for a few years now, and nothing has ever come to fruition. At a time that move would have made sense. This season, that move does not make sense. And it's nothing against Derrick Rose. I think everybody loves Derrick Rose. But from a pure team standpoint, from a pure basketball standpoint, this does not add what you need on the team. It it, it doesn't. Trade deadline is tomorrow again as we record this program on a Wednesday night. It's really going to be interesting to see if the Bucks do anything and if they do something, what will they do? How different will this team look? What will they give up? Or will they just wait it out and wait for the buyout market?
But this team fully healthy is a problem for the entire league. And right now they're playing some really, really good basketball. Again, I like to say it, and, and I'm going to keep saying it, but it's starting to look real familiar. And you love to see it. It's time for us to run the tall sweep. Tall Sweep, brought to you by the good folks at TossNationMedia.com. Your home for the Toss brand of sports, truthful, opinionated, passionate sports. It's what you deserve. I said it in the teaser. All is most certainly life this week on Toss. Been a lot of transactions going on. We spoke a little bit about NBA transactions. Kind of got off, I won't say got off kilter, but got off subject a little bit, talking about some of the NBA trades. Well, that's not where we're going to start. We're going to start with some WNBA trades and transactions because there's some big stuff that's going on in the dub. Just wild. Let's start off with a huge Liberty trade. The New York Liberty trading for former WNBA MVP John Quill Jones. She made the request to the son, hey, trade me. And <laughs> not so many words, hey, I, I, I just, just trade me. I'm requesting a trade. I just I, I I need to I need to go. And can't you blame her? I mean, Kurt Miller dipped. He's now coaching the Sparks. Seemed like when they just couldn't get to the finals, when they just couldn't get over that hump, everything just kind of deteriorated quickly. But they literally weren't done. They acquired in free agency, Syracuse native, former WA MVP, and two-time champion, Brianna Stewart, Stewie, going to New York with John Quell, Sabrina, Benajah Laney. That alone, that alone is just tough. Huge transactions for them. A really good head coach is Sandy Brondello. But the Liberty weren't done. They also pick up a free agency after she announced that she would not be returning to the sky. Courtney Vandersloot, one of the great all time point guards in WNBA history, former WNBA champion. So now you add her to the mix. I mean, that, that, that five right there. I mean, that is, that is, whoo. <laughs> I mean, that's the only word I could come up with. It's not even a word. It's more of a sound. Just whoo. That's going to be tough. And you have to remember, uh, you do have Eastern Conference and Western Conference kind of affiliations during the regular season, but really it, it's, it doesn't matter because there are no conference affiliations for the playoffs. It's the top eight. But if there were just straight-up conference affiliations, it was Eastern Conference playoffs and, and the, Eastern, the Eastern and Western Conference playoffs, they would run right through the East. I mean, really look at the landscape of things right now and, and really ask yourself, who, and I'm talking just keep it Eastern Conference only. 
who really is beating them? Who really has the pieces to do much of anything against them? You would like to say to some, but again, they lost John Quell. They lost, they, they, they lost Jasmine Thomas. Still got Alyssa Thomas down there. But I mean, like I said, Kurt Miller, boom, gone. He's with the Sparks, coaching them. I mean, you would like to say the Mystics, but they're losing pieces too, which leads me to the next team. The defending champion, Las Vegas Aces, who you had a lot of good, and now you got some controversy with them. So let's get to the good. They signed in free agency Candace Parker, former MVP, former two-time champion, former defensive player of the year, former rookie of the year, just a legend. She's bringing her multifaceted scoring, her deep defense to the aces. Never saw that happening. Did not think the aces stood a chance in free agency. And it's not because they're not a preferred destination. I just didn't think that they would be in on her. I thought a piece of me kind of thought that maybe she would finish her career in her hometown of Chicago, brought them a championship, got close last season. Couldn't quite make it. But no, no. She's headed to Vegas. And I kind of foreshadowed when I spoke about the Mystics losing pieces because the Aces then acquired Alicia Clark, another former champion. When she was with the Storm, they acquired her from Washington. Really good pickup. Love that move. But then comes the weird stuff. And I and I said this on Instagram, again, at the 20 double, same as my Twitter. And I was kind of going back and forth with some people. I'm like, look, this whole thing just seems weird to me. It, it, like the, the, the trade, then the transaction, and then De'Erica Hamby comes out with her statement on her Instagram about things that happen. I'm like, ooh, where there's smoke, there's fire. So let's talk about it. They... The, 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 the Aces traded De'Erica Hamby basically for the rights to Amanda Zowie B and a couple of picks. They then turned around a few days later and traded the, the negotiating rights to Amanda Zowie B for picks. And then they made the signing of Candace Parker official, the signing of, of, of Alicia Clark official. And people were swearing up and down, going back and forth. Oh, well, they traded the rights to Amanda Zowie B uh, so we could sign Candace because they don't have any money. I was like, I'm fully aware of their cap situation. And I think all of us that keep up with them are. But one, how are they signing all these people? And two, this whole thing seems weird to me. Why trade De'Erica Hamby, the big guard? Why trade her when she is an integral part of what you do? And you and you did not get any real significant value in return. I say this because of what you did with Amanda Zowie B. And I said this on Instagram. This whole thing seems weird to me. Why trade for Amanda Zowie B? Why trade De'Erica Hamby for, Amer- for Amanda Zowie B? Just to then jettison her for picks. When you could have just traded De'Erica for picks straight up, what is this? This makes no sense. This is weird to me. Like, what is going on? 
And again, people swearing up and down, oh, so they, it, it was so they could sign Candace. It was so they could sign Candace. Candace ain't the only one they signed. Alicia Clark signed. They re-signed Sidney Colson. They made a bunch of re-signings. And they're hard capped. So how are they affording all of these signings? Why would they do that to De'Erica? Why this whole thing seems weird to me? Well, like I said, and I and I said it for a reason. This thing was weird, and with their smoke, there's fire. And now comes news of an investigation into exactly what De'Erica Hamby had listed on her Instagram. There's also allegations of the aces making under-the-table deals, paying players under the table to circumvent the hard salary cap that is in place. Oh, boy. See, the thing is, I've been in these circles long enough. I've been around this game and in this game long enough to know typically where there's smoke, there's fire. And now we're beginning to see that. Now, we don't know where this investigation is going to go. I did reach out for comment on it. I have not received a response. But the ACES did release a statement on their social media really didn't say much, and and basically they said they can't say much because it's an ongoing investigation. If there is something found, this could be real trouble for the defending champions. And it could very well prove what Dierka said was absolutely correct. So we will definitely be keeping an eye on this because it, 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 it's huge. I mean, you could talk about them losing picks. You could talk about signings being voided. You, you basically can talk about this, this franchise being taken aback a few notches, not being able to to do what they want, drafting wise and, and and reloading this team and staying championship caliber. But we'll have to see what this investigation brings about. But typically where there's smoke, there's fire. So we'll keep an eye on that. All right, let's get to some NBA news. Wash our mouths off from that. Bit of dirt there. LeBron James is the scoring king. Broke the record Tuesday night. Got to see that. Wonderful moment. Dropped an F-bomb, but hey, that's real. Clips have surfaced of of a fan talking to him when he was on the court. And and this was a while ago saying, hey, when you break the record, are you going to cry? He said, no, he'll cry when they win another championship. Well, he cried. (laughs) I think it was just really cool to see that his family was there. Uh, you know, it was really cool to see that Kareem was there and, and so many others were there to, to witness that bit of history. I was, I'm going to age myself here, but I was two years old when Kareem broke the all-time scoring record. And, and now I, I, I got to, uh, to see LeBron do it so many years later. It's just wild. It's wild. So congratulations to LeBron, one of the greatest to ever touch a basketball. There is no question about it. Love seeing that moment, and it's just it's mind-boggling what he's doing at this stage of his career, the way he's taking care of his body, the way he goes about his business, the fact that he's lived up to the hype and exceeded it is just absolutely incredible. Congratulations to LeBron James, the all-time scoring king of the NBA. 
again, that was a record I did not foresee dropping at all. We mentioned that the trade deadline is tomorrow. Again, we are recording this program on Wednesday, February 8th. Trade line is Thursday, February 9th. And we've already had some action. Kyrie being traded from the Nets to the Mavericks. Spencer Dinwiddie going back to Brooklyn. That era is now officially over in Brooklyn. The Harden, Irving, Durant era. Never truly got started. They, they really couldn't stay on the court together. And James won himself out. He got himself to Philadelphia. Kyrie had already been called for a trade. Durant had already been called for a trade. Kyrie got his wish. Now that Kyrie is gone, Durant and his club are having conversations with Nets Brass on the future of the franchise because he's a guy that wants to contend. He's a guy that wants to win more championships. Can you do that in Brooklyn with the squad you have now? I'm not so sure. Durant currently still out with injury. Will be out well after the All-Star break as well. No timetable on his return. But you have to remember, he also asked for a trade this past summer. And was dead set on it until he decided to return. And, and Kyrie said he was going to return. And he didn't want to leave his boy seven out there. Well, he left him high and dry in Dallas now. But I'm not going to blame him for that. I'm not going to blame Durant for his demands. I'm not going to blame James Hart for his demands. At what point do we look at Josiah and who he has up in the front office and start putting some of that onus on them? Because you have three superstars, three, all say, I want out of here. I need to get the hell out. We need to start looking at ownership and and, and front office brass funny. We got to start asking those questions. And then the story comes out. We all thought it was just an afterthought that Kyrie was going to go to the Lakers. We, we just felt that that was just absolute destiny. But Josiah decided to direct his GM to ask for far too much from the Lakers to where Rob Polinka, Lakers GM, would walk away from the table and say, you know what, nope, I'm not dealing with it. All because he didn't want to send Kyrie to his preferred destination. Hater to the upteenth extent and exactly why I'm saying what I'm saying. When do you start looking at ownership and saying, what the hell are you doing? Why are three superstars asking you to get them out of there? We want out. Again, I say where there's smoke, there's fire. And we we got proof that Joe Sy is, mm, he may not be on the up and up. Tanking a deal just so you would not send Kyrie to his preferred destination, a team that's not even within the same conference as you? A team that's in the play-in or within play-in range? You're firmly in playoff range right now, but if you keep losing, Durant doesn't get back soon. Your position is going to start to, to slip. Although Cam Thomas, he's, he's keeping the ship afloat, I'll tell you that much. Three straight 40-plus point games. Kid is balling. But something is up in Brooklyn. and We'll see what happens with Durant and where he ends up going. You got all sorts of stories out there saying, oh, X team and Y team and Z team. Will be in if 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 Durant will is made available for trade and Brooklyn's already saying and Joe Sy's already saying that they're not making him available, but we'll see. I don't think there's a team out there that wouldn't love to have Kevin Durant. So 
Okay. Something's definitely going on in Brooklyn. Big trade tonight. The biggest one, probably the three-team trade between the Lakers, Jazz, and Timberwolves involving Russell Westbrook. He's headed to the Jazz, and I'm going to tell you right now, I do not expect him to suit up for the Jazz whatsoever. We already know his documented problems with the Jazz, with fans there, had racist experiences there. I do not foresee him suiting up for the Jazz, not even one game. That's definitely a buyout coming. That's just what I feel. But he's going to the Jazz. Mike Connolly going to the Timberwolves. D'Angelo Russell going back to the Lakers. And that could be very good for the Lakers. They also get Malik Beasley. So you got two guys who can hit the outside shot. Something they desperately need. They definitely need more shooting. We know Russell can get to the cup. That's a very good trade for the Lakers in my eyes. The Jazz, I I think they will be more than happy to buy out Russell Westbrook because of all the piles that Danny Ainge, all the the, the picks that Danny Ainge has been able to to stockpile. Once again, he's stockpiling draft picks. Once again, he's stockpiling draft capital. Danny Ainge doing it again. And the Wolves are still just trying to find their way without Carl Anthony Towns. They're trying to stay afloat, trying to stay within that playing range. Wait for folks to get healthy. Hopefully make a run. But I think it's a trade that really works out for the Lakers. They got something that they needed. They needed shooting. I think they they got that with Russell and, and Beasley. The Jazz, yeah, they get I, – I, and I don't even think the Jazz expect to fully <laughs> have Russell Westbrook. I, I think mostly they did that just so they could get the picks. And the Timberwolves, yeah, you know, Mike Conley is, is a really good point guard, has been for a very long time. But they're just trying to stay afloat at this point. But as I mentioned before, trade deadline, Thursday, February 9th, as we record this on Wednesday, February 8th. I mean, it, it's there could be a lot more movement. There could be a lot of movement. Again, I'm excited to see if the Bucks do anything at this point. Excited to see what the contenders are going to do to kind of fortify their stances and craft their final pieces for their championship runs. Potentially. I don't know if it'll be a too crazy tread deadline, but I think it'll be a very intriguing one. Some teams moving some pieces, playing the chess game, and trying to get themselves in position for a firm playoff run. Well, y'all, that'll do it for me. That was episode 124. Toss Tristan on Sports Show. You know where to find me on social media. At the two zero double. That's at the the number two, the number zero. And the word double on Instagram and Twitter. Follow me there. Facebook.com slash T on Sports Show. That's T-O-N Sports Show. Your home. The toss on Facebook. We cover a lot of things there that we don't necessarily get a chance to hear on this show. So check us out there. Follow us there. Facebook.com slash T on Sports Show. That's T-O-N Sports Show. And of course, TossNationMedia.com. Your home for the Toss brand of sports. Truthful, opinionated, passionate sports. It's what you deserve. But, as I said before, it's time for me to get on up out of here. It's T-Square Tristan Thomas reminding all of you to keep it moving forward. Always forward. Forward always. Until next week. So long. From Toss.